if you want to stay in the same situation, then continue doing what you're doing. And you guys can get on board and go down this four lane highway and just rock it out and you don't have to have a decade of learning process. Meet people where they are. If you want to have all types of clients, be a Rubik's Cube. Meet them where they want to be met. We have to know our numbers. We have to know how much we want, and then what, how many deals do I have to close to make that a reality? What I want to do over the next half hour or so is give you clarity on the items that really are going to generate money for you and allow you to do the things you want to do. So if you're not currently being coached by the people in the industry that are doing it at the highest level, then you're working too hard to get there. This is the Next Level Loan Officers Podcast, a proud founding member of the Real Disrupt Podcast Collaborative. You can check out more awesome podcasts at realdisrupt.com. And now, Kenneth Travis and Sean Zalmanoff. What's up, everybody? Sean Zalmanoff here uh, with this edition of Next Level Loan Officers Podcast. Kenneth Travis, you look amazing, handsome, and, and just smiling as always, bro. And I have to keep up with you, baby. I hey. Well, uh, we have a special guest, James Duncan, today, but hey, folks, before we get started there, remember, we are offering a special for you right now. You know, you probably, I, I know you're slammed with what's going on in the mortgage world, but you may have a little extra time on your hands and be home a little bit more right now, so we wanted to put together something for you. So for the low, low cost of $1, uh, you get the entire Mortgage Success Academy uh, at your disposal for seven days. You just need to go to $1MSA.com. One dollar MSA spelled all out dot com, and you uh, will get access to that. And hey, uh, do us a favor, man. Pick up your phone, go to whatever podcast medium you're on, and if, if you're enjoying what we're putting out, uh, do us a favor. Leave us a five star review and, and write a nice little comment on there too. Uh, we will be reading those at, at some point and giving away prizes for uh, whoever says the nicest thing about me. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we appreciate you all, and, and thank you for joining us today. And James, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Ple uh, pleasure to be on. So James comes to us from Thrive Mortgage. Uh, James uh, is a 16-year industry veteran. Uh, you are the Director of Education at Thrive, and, and you just had your five-year anniversary there, right? I did. So, yeah. uh, so tell us, man, what does the Director of Education of a mortgage company do? Well, full title is De Director of Education and Engagement, and I went with that title because that really summarizes more of what I do on a daily basis. Um, I mean, if you, if you meet somebody and, and ask them, what do you do, and they say, I'm the Director of Marketing, the conversation's pretty much done. I mean, everybody knows that, but you say, if I give them my title, it's much more of a, a conversation starter, so that's one of the reasons why I went with it. But in, in truth, it really uh, exemplifies or, or kind of defines a little bit more of what I do and how I engage with our LOs and our sales teams and kind of the approach that I take. And one of the things about my background is, is uh, I'm also a former high school teacher. And so um, coaching and training is really, it, I, I, it, it wouldn't matter if I wanted to, I wouldn't be able to get away from it. It's just kind of who I am and, and what I do. And so I take a lot of, uh, a lot of time in coaching our loan officers on um, any number of things, whether it's um, scripting or uh, doing videos or doing social media or coaching up on uh, on building their their own brand, uh, a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm also an, an active originator myself, so uh, so they know that I everything that we produce from the marketing team is coming from an an LO's mindset or an LO's perspective because I, because we actually have three folks on our marketing team who are licensed originators as well. So that really helps and kind of differentiates a lot of the content and the, the collateral that we produce and makes it a lot more useful. So that's hey man, kind I of the, I got a serious question for you. Okay. Who's easier to deal with loan officers or high school kids? Um, they're, they're on about equal ground. Um, I'm going to go with high school kids. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, that, that's kind of funny because a lot of people ask me if I, if I got out of teaching because of the kids and, and I, I look at them like, no, I got out because of the adults. Uh, <laughs> the, the kids were awesome. Yeah. Cool. Hey, man. So, uh, so we were talking uh, before we started this and, and just really about leadership and, you know, there's some interesting times going on in our world right now and, and really leadership and technology and, and how that works together in this market. And, uh, man, give, give me a few insights on what you're thinking right now, James. Well, as far as, uh, do you mean leadership in, in terms of like the individual sales team or leadership from a more of a corporate perspective? 
You know, I think that uh, for, for our listeners right now, uh, they're going to get a, a lot more value if we talk about how we lead from a team standpoint, sure. um, what they can do to, to assist their management and the mm-hmm. things that they can do to uh, assist the people that, you know, that they're leading as well. That's an excellent question. Um, I think as far as if you break it down to like the, the branch, I'll start at the, at the branch level and say you've got a, uh, either a broker or a branch manager who is leading a team. The best thing that they can do is make sure is to over communicate honestly and just say, look, this is what's going on. Give them, give them that constant update, give them the support, let them know that, that you are there to, uh, to support their business. Cause there there's people out there. They're either, uh, they're either swimming, uh, and in over their heads cause their pipelines are fuller than they've ever been before in their lifetimes or they're struggling. And the, the, there's very little, uh, from what I've seen, there's very little in between. And I think that, that your, your average loan officer needs to, needs to just constantly be reminded of how essential they are to this process right now. Our, uh, our CFO actually put out a, a post this morning to an internal Facebook group that, uh, that we have talking about how you, Mr. and Mrs. Individual LO, you are essential to not just the, the company's success or, or the team's success, but to the success of the industry right now. There are a lot of folks that are kind of in that we don't know what we don't know phase. And this is, uh, for a lot of folks, this is a scary time. Well, th- this is, as you and I were talking about earlier, Sean, this is kind of one of those instances where as opposed to what happened in 2008 and 2000, 2020, the real estate industry is going to be one of the main catalysts that kind of gets us through this rough patch and gets us out, out of this, what a lot of people are now predicting is going to be a recession for the next two quarters. Real estate is really going to be instrumental in getting us through that. So I think as long as the, the individual LO knows that they are uh, being taken care of, that their files are going to be uh, pushed through as fast as, as quickly as, as humanly possible, that they know that, they, that their leader has their back, then that's going to allay a lot of, those, uh, a lot of fears and concerns for, for some of those people. KT, man, this, this sure does feel a little bit different going into this recession than it does in the last one. You've been in this industry almost as long as me, so, so you've got almost as much experience, right, bro? I tell you, man, like, it, it, you know, talking about a recession, like we've, it, it's an exciting time in this industry for me. I think a lot of people are scared, but I think when, like I do, man, I think that a lot of people are just like, oh man, they don't know what to expect. There's so many originators out there that haven't gone through a, um, a downturn in the market. They haven't, they haven't seen this. They haven't seen this before. We seen it in 2008, you know, but Sean, I mean, dude, you and I have been talking about, a recession for six to eight months like we knew it was coming like a lot of people knew that it was coming uh of course this uh you know this virus that's uh you know that, that hit that hit the united states uh maybe exposed it a little bit more but you know when you have a hundred years of history and out of those a uh, hundred years we've had 11 recessions a hundred percent of the time those 11 recessions are hit after having one of the highest uh, i mean the lowest unemployment records Ever. Yeah. And so we knew this was coming. Um, so like, how do we react as originators in this marketplace? You know, I like what James is saying. It's like, you, you know, you know, people need to be in a place where they feel secure, right? And they know that there's, that their business is going to be taken care of. And they know that their loans are going to close on time. They're still going to be able to provide for their families, but they also want to understand the market. Okay. Well, what does the recession mean for us? Well, James hit like James, you're right. And I agree with that hundred percent. Like, Dude, I think for the next 18 to 24 months, we're going to have probably some of the, you know, because anytime the market, whether the market's doing, you know, semi, like if it's doing terrific, you know, rates typically go up, right? Uh, but we knew a recession was coming in a recession. It's always felt like that the industry's always been good for the originator and for, you know, everyone in real estate in general when we do go through these times of recession. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like, it's like, it's the best, it's like the best playground to, to be in for us. And so, you know, so I think that it's important, man, for, for loan officers to know that they're aligned with, you know, they're, they're, they're within the right group and organization. And if you're listening and you're one of those leaders, like you have to make sure your people are taken care of in that way. You gotta, like, you gotta know, hey, is where I'm at, you know, the place that I need to be. 
and uh, and understanding. And the other thing is just understanding the market. Like, where's everything? You know, where's everything going? And then how do I fit inside of this industry? And am I, and I'm not, am, I, am I at that place? And I'm hoping, you know, am I in the best position possible to be successful in, in my business? And I think that it's going to be really good for a lot of people. What is in? We we also know that you know, based on other countries that have, have amassed the amount of debt uh, that we have here in the United States, that that actually stifles innovation and growth uh, to an extent uh, for those governments. And, and it's going to keep rates low for an extended period of time. And, um, you know, we, we talk about being an advisor, you know, Barry Habib uh, has been on quite a few of our podcasts as well. And, and you know, that's, that's his motto as well, too. And so one of the things that, that we have the power as originators right now, as, as leaders, as, as managers, as regional managers, owners of companies, whatever group you fall into there, is we control our systems and we control the message. And the single most important thing that I believe that we control is the message because there is a lot of scared people out there. And mm-hmm. if you're scared, your people are going to be scared. Mm-hmm. If you're not scared and... It's okay to be cautious. I'm just saying, you know, you don't need to run for your bunker in the basement. Like, and you lead, like we have the opportunity to take that advisor piece. You know, I mean, you know, James and KT and I, we, we all work at different companies, but, but I want them to succeed. I don't want Quicken to succeed. I don't want these FinTech companies to take our business away from us. Whether you're a bank or your broker, like I want you to succeed because if you do, I win. And if, and if I do, you win. And so if we control that message correctly and explain what it's like to be an advisor, explain, I mean, nobody wanted to lock a rate last Friday. I mean, I, I think from Friday to Monday, rates opened up like three quarters of a point better uh, in, in the market when just the, we, we, got, we got a little bit of pricing back and the Fed started buying $25 billion a day in mortgage-backed securities. You know, there, there's a few things that, that happened for us there, uh, but, but the investors themselves, some of the demand mitigated, and so they were able to give us some room back on rate sheets as well too. And like, <clears throat> if somebody was just going to a phone to lock a rate that day, I mean, they would have paid an exorbitant amount more than talking to an advisor. And so we have to, as we control that message, which we can through technology, bomb, bomb, whatever CRM they're using, Facebook. I mean, everybody's on Facebook, guys. Get out there, control the message, and tell people what they should be doing. And, and that's another thing, too. Like, one of the things that, that we're having a lot of success with is when, in, when the stock market's going up, when rates are going down, when everything's great, man, you know, everybody wants to be a chief. But right now, when there's uncertainty, man, people want to be told what to do. It's just, it's just their nature. So, so give them the advice. Tell them how to set themselves up for success you're not going to only win today by doing more loans, but man, they're going to remember that two and three years down the road when everything's great and everything's humming just perfect in the economy. Like there's no way I'm not going to go back to Kenneth or James and use them for my mortgage. Yeah, uh, no, it's an excellent point. And, and what's great about, I mean, if, if there is a silver lining to what's going on right now, speaking, and this is me with my director of marketing hat on, it's all the coaching that we've been putting into uh, getting engaged in social media. Uh, or get, or doing more videos and letting people see your face and hear your voice. And uh, I mean, I, I know that uh, Josh Pitts is, is uh, f- uh, famous for saying, well, he didn't invent it, but he, st- he says it a lot where, where he says, you know what, if you're scared about video because of how you look, you don't like how you look, you don't like how you sound, well, how you look and sound on video is exactly how you sound in real life. And, and so th- this is a time where we're seeing the folks who are taking that coaching seriously and getting out there and putting more, doing more and more videos, not because they're like, okay, yeah, it's a good idea. It's a necessity. It's absolutely a necessity. And getting more engaged in social media and sending the right kinds of updates that are not inciting, inciting more of that fear and panic in people and being that calm voice of reason is really critical right now. And, and you're absolutely right, Sean. It's going to pay such big dividends to the people who engage with that down the road. I was I was just checking my phone real quick because I, I did a post, uh, right? Did a little video right before we got on with uh, <clears throat> with a Hulk Hogan, or not a Hulk Hogan, but but an incredible Hulk uh, figurine. And like we, were, I already have seven di- uh, direct messages uh, from it about, nice. about the engagement that we got. I mean, that's, that's at awesome. least five new loans that my team's going to originate today. On top of the everything else that's going on, J- just by doing it and telling people what's going on with the market, like. It's just not that hard, dude. It really isn't. 
I mean, I mean, if you think about it, you, you do one video on Facebook and that replaces the hundred calls that you were going to make uh, had, uh, had you not been quarantined at your house. We, we were talking earlier too before we got on and you know, I know all of our companies like 2018 and 2019 were big years for technology push and like not only did, did we, we push a ton of technology down to our loan officers and you know, we, we developed two departments that we didn't have before uh, for the implementation because you can push but you know what you, you can take, lead somebody to water, you can shove their head in the water but you, but you can't make them drink it. Um, and so it's really been interesting over the last few weeks to see, you know, we can see when people access stuff and like the surge in CRM use, the surge in bomb bomb use, and just like the, the amount of requests that they've had. Hey, can I learn more about this? Can I learn more about this? Where's that channel you sent me seven months ago that showed me how to use this thing? And, and like, this is the time though, man, that this, this might be the thing, you know, it's terrible as this, this thing is that. That saves our industry. You're absolutely right. Um, so, uh, so, so, so what else? Like what's going on in, uh, in your guys world? What are you doing right now? Like setting your loan officers up for success. What are you telling them to do as, as they're controlling the message and getting it out there that, uh, that are just value to the whole industry, James? Well, one of the things that, that we do on the marketing team is we provide them with a lot of collateral um, and pieces like static images or short little commercial length videos that just have music playing in the background with, with overlays and, and uh, my creative, uh, I've got a, a fantastic uh, creative director who's uh, one of the best graphic designers I've ever worked with. He comes up with some really cool stuff. And so we can give them that kind of stuff and we do uh, regularly, uh, but I think the biggest benefit is the coaching that we provide them because that's multiplying our department uh, exponentially. Because if we coach them how to do these things, then they go off and do it themselves and they don't have to wait for us to produce something. If they have an idea of something that would, hey, that would be really good content to post or that would be a really good video topic, then they are, they're empowered because they've been coached on how to do it and the best systems to use in order to make that happen. I mean, you've held up your phone a couple of times. It's one of the best cameras in the world. And, and I mean, there you go. I mean, just use that, shoot a quick 30 second video. Hey, here's what's going on with the markets. Boom, put it out there. And as you said, you've already got five inquiries on it or seven. And uh, so that, that's one of the big things that we do is empowering them to, to do for themselves and not just rely on fancy, slick flyers and, and cutesy little commercials and and wait for the content to come out from the marketing department. We do a good job of pushing it out, but we're not in those local markets. They are. Whereas, so there might be something come across the news or something that comes across a Twitter feed of, of one of their realtors, and they can jump on it immediately. They don't have to come to us for a graphic. They can immediately pull up their phone, make a response, jump on, uh, and, and jump on it and, and talk about why that's such an important piece of information. And it's instantaneous. So that, that's, the, that's one of the primary things that I think that, that we've done, and we've been doing that for a while, so, it's not, uh, so nobody's having to scramble in order to learn how to do these things. We've been coaching on a lot of these tactics for a very long time, and so, and this is, and so it's, it's kind of what we were talking about before. You, you can have all the fancy bells and whistles when it comes to technology. You can have all those fancy bells and whistles, but if you don't know how to use them or if you haven't taken the time to learn how to use those yet, right now is too late. For you to be learning that you need to be proficient at how to use the, that technology in order to enhance your borrower's experience and kt speaking our language this is this is this will be coach inside the next level but but james i i do like i have to disagree with you on one thing there like Sorry. it's not too late like you guys got a phone in your hand pick it up right now record a video put it out there like <clears throat> man i'm when kt and i first started doing video seven, eight years ago. And man, I had like the nicest spinning intro of this thing that came across and everybody loved it. And it took like 15 seconds to get to the video, man. Like you can't even get somebody's attention for more than three and a half seconds right now. Like just picking up that phone and, and doing a raw video and putting it up there. Like you, you don't need, like, you know how to do it. If, if you've operated, if you can turn on your cell phone, you know how to do it, man. Even if you got like a, you know, like version six of something instead of, 10 or 25 or whatever it's out right now, man, your shitty video is better than everybody else's video that they're putting that, that they're not putting out right now. And, and the number one thing that you need to remember with video, people will forgive bad video. They won't forgive the audio. 
So just make sure you sound good or plug a mic into it and you don't have to worry about the rest. Yep. Absolutely right. Kenneth, man, what, what's up, man? What, what, what are you hearing, dude? This is like, this is so much about what you tell everybody in Next Level that they just need to get off their tail end and do. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I'm going to tell you, man, like, you know, with a low rate environment that we have or a lower rate environment that we have, um, if you're not closing, you know, a minimum of, of three to five loans a month, then you're just not working. Like you're just not like you just. Yeah, you know, I was gonna say ten. Yeah, I, yeah, even that. I'm just, <laughs> you were being nice. I'm giving like ultra conservative numbers here. Um, <clears throat> you know, I look back. <clears throat> I look back on when I really started. You know, um, crafting. You know, my marketing and my brand for for and, and you know and you know this. I mean, a lot of people tease me about you know me being the mayor of my town, and they don't do it from a perspective of. Um, of, you know, being mean, but like, I've just really branded myself well. And I look back even more than seven years ago, it's probably more like 12 years ago when video was like, Oh my gosh, video, I'm not doing video. And, uh, and that's really what it was for me. Like I still do video to this day. I do two or three videos a week, you know, and it's just, you know, people are always getting ready to do videos and if you'll stop getting ready to do videos and just start doing them, regardless of the outcome, you're, you'll grow. But you've got to get out of that comfort zone. And, you know, to your point, James, you know, like uh, Josh Pitt says, you know, um, you know, people are, you know, like, like me, like I'm a great example of, of this. Like I, uh, I go to the drive-thru sometimes. Sean, I've, I've shared this experience before. Like I'll go through a drive-thru and order something, and sometimes they'll be like, thank you, ma'am, can you pull around? I'm like, I'm a dude. And they're just like, you know, <laughs> I get there and I pay and I'm like, I'm a dude. You call me a man back there. And I had this lady man voice, right? And so sometimes my voice is mistaken for a woman. So sometimes. how do you think I feel? Yeah, how do you think I feel when I do video? Like, I don't always like the way that I sound. But I also understand that like what I hear, when I hear myself speak on video, what I hear doesn't sound like I sound when I'm speaking, right? But you know, but if you look into that and read into this, the way that we hear ourselves speak isn't how other people hear us, mm -hmm. right? Like Absolutely. the way they hear us is the way they hear us. Um, another analogy I like to use is how people say, well, I've got a big nose or I'm overweight or whatever. I'm like, well, hey, if you ran into someone at the grocery store that you saw, would you talk to them? I'm like, well, yeah. So why wouldn't you do it on video? Like right. I see you the same way in person as I'm going to see you on video. And so okay. people just have this story that they're telling themselves about not doing video or what are they going to think about me? What are they going to say about me if I start doing this video? And like, I just tell people to like quit being scared, get mm -hmm. off your butt and just pull out your damn phone and record a video. You don't need fancy transitions. You don't need a big introduction. People just want the content. They want the, they want the real you, you know, and they just want video. Like just, like, and sometimes people wait to do the videos, right? Like I say, don't wait to do videos. Just like when I'm inspired and I have a moment, I don't care if it's four o'clock in the morning or if it's, if it's, you know, nine o'clock at night, I do the videos when, when it comes to me and I'm feel the most emotionally connected to a, to a thought or a situation or a circumstance. And I just like right now, like boom. And I just record I can send that shit out later. I mean, KT's got an iPhone 4 there, and it, it yeah. works. <laughs> so I just, yeah, man, like I just, like, and I want to encourage people, like just, like I'm telling you, man, video is what, is what really catapulted me, and it catapults so many loan officers that so many people don't do it because they're afraid, or they just do it one or two times, and they say, well, that didn't work for me. I mean, you got to do videos consistently over you know, a six month period for it to really move the needle and for people to start because it's, it's, it, you're doing video, but you're doing all these other things to do branding and marketing. And it's in addition to everything else that you do. And right. then eventually six or you know, three months down the road, you're going to walk into a room of realtors and they're already going to know. And they're going to look at you like a local celebrity expert authority. and like, Oh, that's, that's Kenan. He does those videos. I got, kind of feel like I know him, even though I've never met him and never met each other. Like, ah, you know, it's kind of trying this, you know. And so, um, you know, people tease me about that because I know so many people in my marketplace. And it's not because I'm better than anybody. It's just that I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I've gotten over that fear factor of doing videos. Right. And I hear 
I don't even listen to my videos, man. Well, the mayor still sends you a Christmas gift every year right now, right? So you don't run against him, doesn't he? Yes, yes. No, I'm kidding. But, but I just, yeah, man, I just, I don't even watch them. I just put them out and realtors tell me how great they are. Yeah. Because it's just authentic and real. I don't care if I stumble or whatever I say. And it's the same thing that I did with, with the one that we record before. And, and the reason that I did it that way, because KT, like your point and what I just, like the, I think the most important thing you said about video is that you just did it, do it when you feel like it. Because if you write down the idea, come to it the next day, you're, you'll have talked yourself out of it. It's not going to, all the word, like you'll have the idea, but all of the great words that were flowing through your head and that you could have just spouted off right then uh, are not going to be there. They're, they're not going to come to you. And man, that's, you just, you just got to do it. There's definitely a time for the slick production for the, for those, those kind of transition videos. But what, what the three of us are talking about right now, that's not, that's not it. When I first started doing videos, it, it was, it was a chore because I had the wrong mindset and I felt like everything had to have an intro and an outro and the transition and the backing music and blah, 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 blah. And then the engagement would just completely fall flat. But when I stopped doing that, when I started just extending my arm and hitting, hitting record, those video and just posting it just because I had some kind of random thought, those videos got way more engagement, way more interaction because it was that uncut, that, uh, that authenticity and the, and the genuine, genuinely me. It wasn't, yep. uh, there weren't all these jump cuts in there. there. There weren't these transitions and overlays and all that stuff. I mean, there's definitely a place for that but save it for like your website, save it for your YouTube channel, but for Facebook, for Twitter, for Instagram, for those kind of platforms, for LinkedIn, for those kind of platforms, just do you. Yeah. Yeah. Totally so, agree. I just want to leave you all with something before we, before we wrap this up and guys, everybody knows that the calmest place to be in a storm is at the eye of the storm. And so that's what, that's where we have control and like all the chaos that's going on around you, in your normal life and, and, and what we're living right now and anything else that's going on, you just, you got to be the eye of the storm, man. You can control the pieces of your puzzle and act stronger with just more leadership and more intensity when, when you can manage it from the eye of the storm and be calm, be that force right now. That's what you need. That's what the people who work with you need. That's, that's what your loving spouse and kids at home need. And, that, and that's what the world needs. So just be the eye of the storm and, and go crush it. James, if um, that's a real good analogy, I like that. Somebody wanted to, to, to reach out to you. How do they do it? Do you, you got a social media tag or something they can find you at? I do. Uh, best way to find me is if you just, if you go to Facebook and do at mortgage teach or at mortgage teacher, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of, that's the, that's my brand. Now there, there is a company up in Canada going by the same thing. Uh, so if you go to my website, it's mortgage teacher.com, but on just about every platform, if you, if you search for either my name, James Duncan or mortgage teacher, then you'll find me. Awesome. KT, you want to send us out? Sure, man. Um, guys, we appreciate you guys like we do. Right? We really appreciate everyone that listens, you know, to our podcast. It means a great deal to us and, uh, man, we've had some amazing podcasts over the over the last couple of years. Just it, it's funny because Shane, Sean and I uh, actually uh, uh, get to like we run into people, don't we, Sean? And we're just like, oh, you guys do the podcast, and we're like, yeah, do you like it? And they listen, and you know, we just we had a lot of success with our podcast, and uh, and we appreciate all the reviews that you guys have provided. And we certainly always like asking for reviews. So if you get time to go to iTunes or whatever your podcast platform is, certainly give us a review. Uh, maybe share with us an aha moment or uh, some takeaways that you've gotten. And uh, and if you're you know if you're looking to get plugged into next level loan officers and you want to simply just uh, see you know where our next event is, uh, you can go to loanofficerevents.com. That's loanofficerevents.com has our schedule up there. Uh, obviously, we've had some delays and we're rescheduling some things, but nonetheless, our yearly schedule is there. We'd love to have you at one of our live events. We've always been told that we give way more value than what we take in payment uh, for these uh, very inexpensive two-day trainings with us, um, and we'd love to have you out at one of those. So um, we appreciate you guys, and uh, James, thank you for your time today, and uh, Sean, thank you for being awesome. Thank you My all. Pleasure. Thanks, for guys, for having me. I appreciate it. Love what you guys are doing.
We appreciate you, James. Hey, and if you all want to, to listen to some more podcasts, of course, you can find us on your preferred medium. You can also check out our app. You can text the words next level to 36260. That is next level to 36260. And uh, get some more great free information that we just want to provide to move the needle for our industry. Peace out, y'all. See you.